another episode of our ultimate compression and compressor guide in this video the best and cheapest analog opto compressors let's get to it <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Mix Best TV. Hope you're having a great day. Before we start, check the info box down below for my mixing courses on Pro Mix Academy and special discounts and offers on plugins. And if Mix Best TV videos are helping you, you want to support the channel, now you can become a Mix Best TV member by clicking the join button down here. Take a look at the perks. You can access to exclusive content like members only posts, videos, chats, Pro Tools session to download with files and also mix consultations with me via email or Skype. So. Click the join button, take a look. Let's get to the video. Optocompressor is one of the most common topology for compressor design. If we go for the most ubiquitous, always present in every studio and most home studio as well, one of the most cloned design ever, the holy grail of optocompressors can only be the LA-2A and it's T4 OptoCell. The original Teltronics is obviously discontinued, but we have available the reissue by Universal Audio. Some still prefer the old vintage unit, but also those vintage units all sounds very different one another. I tried several and they really sound different one another. But the Universal Audio Ratio is an amazing compressor. I used it so many times. It's one of the go-to for vocals, of course, for bass as well, but also for kick and snare. That goes for many opto compressors. So a number one, just because how many are out there could not be anything else but the LA-2A. But the runner-up is just as common and to be honest, preferred uh, by many to the LA-2A and is the TubeTech CL1B. This one is a cleaner compressor compared to the LA-2A, a favorite for tracking and mixing vocals. It's so sweet sounding. The Tube CLA-1A is an all tube opt compressor and is just as present as the LA-2A in today's rigs. We find it in so many A-list vocal chains, it's not even funny. Uh, it's more versatile than the LA-2A because it has completely variable attack and release and ratio. For this reason, it's not a set and forget that like the LA-2A, but definitely more versatile. It sounds great on vocals. It tends to be a clean and transparent compressor, but it has that sheen that whoever used the CL-1B knows what I'm talking about, that only the CL-1B does have. It's capable of high amount of gain reduction while still sounding musical. The CL-1B is definitely a top-notch compressor. Number three, Shadow Hills Optograph. I put this one right next to the two behemoth that we just mentioned because this might be one of the best bang for the buck compressors. There are no tubes in it. This is a solid state compressor, but sounds great and it's cost effective. It is two slots in 500 series. It has three positions for high pass filter. That alone makes it so versatile and almost foolproof. It really reacts to the material in a musical way. And even if at first glance, the controls are limited, it's very versatile. And the desaturate mode on it, it adds to the versatility because it makes it super, super clean and transparent. Something that you want on vocals more often than you would think. While clean, transparent Shadow Heels gear, even without the saturation modes and the iron of the bigger units, add a specific flavor typical to the Shadow Heels gear. And this one is an absolutely great compressor for vocals, for both tracking and mixing, and in 500 series is a great form. So definitely check it out. Number four, LA-3A, the universal audio version. This is another solid state optocompressor because remember, optocompressors are not necessarily tubes. We talked about this in the very first video of this series when we went through all the topologies. The LA-3A is a classic optocompressor. The original URA is discontinued, but of course there is a reissue. There are several reissues actually. Uh, number four here, we put the universal audio because it's the direct reissue of the old ura the la3a is usually a favorite for guitars for vocals aggressive vocals but also so many other sources is a very versatile uh, compressor in general there are in this list cheaper option both for the 3a and 2a that we'll see in a minute a number five manly allop the manly allop recently revamped its manly take on the la2a design it sees the same two controls like the la2a the peak and gain but it also has an hpf filter which makes it of course a little more versatile again the manly is an old tube unit it's a bit expensive of course but it's worth it because the components are all high end so basically manly take on the la2a this will be controversial but i put the distressor in this list 
not because the distressor is an opto per se, but it does have an opto mode in it. And the opto mode aims at replicating what the LA-2A does. Now, actually, in, on the distressor, there are settings that emulate three different compressors, the LA-2A, the 1176, and the DBX. That's also why the distressor became so popular, because you could have the three standards in one unit. The distressor is arguably the most versatile and overall, I would say, best design of a single channel compressor ever. And the opto mode sounds absolutely amazing. Uh, it's not really that close to what the LA-2A does. It has its own color, its own behavior, is a lot more versatile, uh, even in opto mode. It's the distressor opto mode. I would put it in its own category, in its own shelf, so to speak. Because of all the other controls on the distressor, even in opto mode, you can tailor it to everything. And it does behave like an opto compressor. With the added saturation, you can dial in pretty much whatever you want. This is why the distressor is so versatile and so loved. Now we get to the most affordable stuff, but still absolutely great. In fact, you can see them here next to me. Golden Age Comp 2A and 3A. Both are opto compressors. The 3A is a solid state, the 2A is the tube version of it. Both follow the design respectively of the LA3A and the LA2A. These two compressor sounds absolutely amazing. As soon as I got them, I loved them immediately and started using them for both tracking and mixing, and they make all my mixes. I said this several times, I prefer the Comp 2A to both at least one vintage LA-2A and a reissue in a direct comparison during a tracking session for vocals. So don't be fooled by the price. These units are absolutely great. And they both have additional functions on them compared to the original units. I have dedicated video reviews for both, so check those out if you want to know more. But in short, the additional control, we have the HPF sensitivity on the LA-3A, a two switches gain mod for 50 or 30 dB mod and normal gain that changes completely the internal gain staging of the LA-3A and the saturation of it, the compression threshold, everything. Uh, limit compress, which we'll find on the 3A, and bypass. So the 2A also comes with a high frequency sensitivity that is variable. The original LA-2A had it on the back, so you can find this here in the front. And it's an all tube unit, totally legit. You can even swap tubes, uh, plug and play if you want. And it, they come in half rack format both, so they're really great because you have both in two racks. Next one is another reissue of the LA-2A, is the Worm Audio WA-2A. I have no experience with this one. I tried it once, so I'm not gonna say anything about it, but I just want to make you guys aware of it because it's very popular, you see it often. It looks and it has the same controls as the original LA-2A with the pre-emphasis, the high frequency sensitivity on the back as opposed to the Golden Age, which has it on the front, which for me, it's so much better, but it costs a little more than the Golden Age, uh, something to keep in mind. Like I said, I have no experience with it, but take a look at it. Last one is the cheapest analog opto compressor you can buy, and it's the Art Pro VLA2 that I had for a couple of years. So I actually have direct experience with this. This one is a Vectral Opto design, to be precise, and it also has some tubes in it. But like we said, uh, opto compressor doesn't mean full tube. They can be full tube, but they can have tubes in the design in various places. So the VLA-2A also has tubes, I think in the output stage. Like I said, I had it for several years and you know what? I liked it very much. It's a no brainer, it's super cheap and it's built fairly well. I never had any problem with it. It can be very, very snappy and fun on drums, kick and snare or the whole drum bus actually. Uh, it, it's not that great with bass heavy material. It can be a little scratchy or not react that well with bass heavy material. It does not have an HPF filter either, so something to keep in mind. But if you are on a tight budget, this is definitely an option. It's stereo. Um, it's not a unit that you will probably keep your whole life, so you're better off saving a little more and get the golden age, in my opinion. But it's still fun to use and good to get your feet wet and start learning analog compressor, how they react and tweak knobs. Side note, a lot of people start modding these VLA-2A with transformers, swapping tubes and stuff. So this is my experience. I, I tried swapping tubes in it and I put very expensive tubes in it because I had them laying around and it basically doesn't change anything. In some cases, I don't remember with what, probably some Telefunken tubes, they were very expensive. Uh, it made it even worse 
because of the way the design is, uh, where the tubes are, they are not really part of the design. They are like, I, I, like I said, in the output stage, I think. So it, actually the stock tubes, if used correctly, if, if gain staged correctly, they break nicely on some material. They don't have a lot of headroom. It does, the unit itself doesn't have a lot of headroom on the output, so pay attention to that because it distorts very quickly. If you go in the red, you can't push it like an API output, for example, but it's still a nice unit, a good unit. And again, it's the cheapest optocompressor you can buy out there. So definitely had to make the list. But this is it for this video. I hope it was useful. I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. Check the info box down below for all the links to the gear mentioned in this video. Also for my mixing courses and discounts on plugin. Click the join button if you want to become a Mixbus TV member. Take a look at all the perks. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.